How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be working on the daily beater, daily car, Volkswagen, Jetta. Um, so you guys recall that um, it was a salvage title vehicle, so we were repairing it. And the clock spring was actually not working, because a lot of times when the airbag goes, clock spring goes bad. So we ended up picking up a clock spring. And some of the diagnostics or symptoms is the horn doesn't work. Uh, the cruise control, so some of the buttons on the steering wheel don't work. So I went ahead and got a used verified working one. And one of the things when you buy used ones, you have to make sure that it's centered before you actually install it. So before we rip apart the actual car, what we're gonna do is go ahead and center this. And what you do is you count how many turns it is lock to lock. So you turn it all the way until you feel a bit of resistance. And then starting from that point, it could be all the way to the right or all the way to the left. It doesn't really matter too much, but all the way to the one side. And then you count how many turns all the way to the other side until you feel a little bit of resistance. And you have to be careful with this because you don't want to put too much resistance and snap the ribbon cable that's inside. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna count the number of turns from one side to the other, and then you're gonna divide it in half, and that'll be the center of this. So once you center it, then we can put it on with the wheel centered um, and we can go from there. So first things first, let's double check and verify this, see where it's centered and then we can start ripping a car apart. Okay, so let's go ahead and open the package. This is just some sort of plastic wrap that is a lot tougher than I anticipated. But this is the way I got it from the salvage yard. They wrapped it, pre-wrapped it, whatever. After they removed it. Okay, so here we go. So, like I was saying, we're going to take it and we're going to turn it until we feel resistance. This is probably easier to do it from this side. Until we feel resistance on one way. So, let's turn it. We don't have to really worry about how many times we're counting it just yet. So there, see how it stopped? So we'll use this one line as our point of reference until um, we get to the other side there. So there's where it's gonna stop. So we're gonna go half a turn, one turn, half a turn, two turns, half a turn, three turns, half a turn, four turns, half a turn, almost five turns. So we got almost five turns. So if we double check that again, we can start from here again. So maybe we should just do one full turn. So using this as our point of reference, we're all the way left. One, two, three, four. So almost five, you can see. If we had to came back around there, it's almost five. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're almost gonna turn this two and a half turns is where we're gonna need to center this thing. So if this is orientation up and down, we're going to need to turn this um, almost two and a half turns so that this lines up. So let's use this as our point of reference. There's one, there's two, and here's a little bit more. So it should be somewhere around there more or less. So once we get to the vehicle, we know it's almost five turns. Um, and it depends, I'm not sure exactly offhand where this is positioned, but they usually give you a bit of a buffer, so as long as we're somewhat close, we should be okay, but um, we'll double check exactly where this is, but right now we should be centered uh, according to this thing. So let's go ahead, rip apart the actual car, we'll take this out, and then we can double check it, we'll verify it, and we'll go from there. We do have to get the Viper out of the way, because the truck is down right now, the pulley, supercharger pulley is off, so I can't move it, because the belt's all just hanging. So we will have to work over here, but not a big deal. Let's go ahead, get the Viper out of the way, and then we'll start. So here we are, first things first, we will pop the hood because you want to disconnect the battery when working with anything airbag related. 
I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this with one hand to be completely honest with you guys. So I'll set the camera down here, prop this up, and you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the terminals. All right, so with the battery terminals disconnected, no powers in the vehicle, and like I was saying, the horn doesn't work on this, and the cruise control doesn't work, and it's showing an error in the dash. So to remove the airbag on this, um, I don't, I don't know if I would say it's easy, but it's not hard. It's already locking on me. You will need the key still in the ignition, just so the steering wheel doesn't lock when you do this. And let me put it in here. So you don't have to turn it on necessarily, but. I can do this with one hand with the camera. You do need to at least turn it so that the lock isn't locked. And what you're gonna find is on the back side here, you have to turn the wheel like this to expose a little hole. And there's a little hole in the back where you have to jam a screwdriver. So you have to put it like this and get yourself a little screwdriver like this. And what it is is there's two, um, there's two springs, one here and one here, and you have to lever them off of these posts. It's gonna be easier for me to show you guys once you get it out, but you have to put it in and pry it and lift, um, and the airbag will pop out. So let me go ahead and do that. I don't know if I can get this big fat camera in there to show you, but just on the back side there, you should be able to see, maybe there's this little hole here. So anyways, I'm gonna pop this out and then we'll continue. Okay, so it's definitely not easy, but these are the two spring clips that you're trying to pry against, and it does take some force, they're pretty strong. So it's this one, and this one on the opposite side, and those are the two access holes here, and here in the back, you can see my screwdriver kind of popping through here, and that's what you're trying to work with. You're trying to push these springs back, or track them so that it can unclip from here. Um, like I said, it is a bit of a pain, um, but you just have to work with it, play with it, and be patient, and it'll pop out. And then next thing is going to be, of course, removing <coughs> um, this from the steering wheel. So there's this clip here, you slide this locking pin, this slides off, you can see that there. And then there's one more clip here that goes into the left hand portion, like so. And there we go. So the airbag is free, like that. And then next, you're going to need one of these triple square. And the reason why they call it triple square, four times three, it's a 12 point socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Um, and then we should be able to yank the steering wheel off. So there's the triple square inserted into the steering column. And you can go ahead and lock your steering again, just to make it easier for yourself. So that when you start turning this thing, it ends up hitting the lock, the steering lock, hopefully, and then it'll catch. So actually you probably have to take the key out for the steering lock. There we go, steering lock. And just like that, we'll remove this bolt. Like so, and the steering wheel pops off. So now we are at this, and that's what it's gonna look like. But, um, give me one second here. We do have to, the steering wheel came off a lot simpler than I was anticipating, but we do have to make sure that the wheels are straight because that's going to make sure that, see how they're a little bit cocked to the right? We have to make sure the wheels are straight so that we can go ahead and center our clock spring at the same time. So in order to make sure the wheels are straight after we got that bolt loosened or removed, probably could have just loosened it and left the wheel on, but we'll have to go ahead and. Um, put the key in the ignition just to get the steering wheel lock to turn off again or to disengage and then we will turn our wheels so that they are straight And once we're verified that they're straight We can go ahead and <coughs> remove the wheel So I'm just gonna double check that the wheels are straight since I'm in here with you guys I'll verify it and then we can take the wheel off 
Okay, so the steering wheel is straight, and one other way that you guys can actually check to make sure that the wheels are straight, as you will see from the factory, there's an index. They both put both a line on the steering wheel itself, and also on the column, there's a tiny little hash mark. So this is straight. If I pop it off the wheel, you guys should be able to see this tiny little hash mark if the camera focuses. See that tiny little mark there? So that indicates the center. So we're pretty much centered here. What we're going to do next is there's a couple of screws on the bottom holding this steering wheel cover on. So we're going to pop those off so that we can get to the actual clock spring. So the screw is out of the bottom. This one's going to be loose. We don't have to completely remove it. Next one, you're going to see two torque screws in the front. So there's one. Here is two. So there's those. And you probably have to remove your key again for a millionth time so that you can get this plastic away and around the clock spring. They kind of have this weird hinge mechanism on the bottom plate here. Okay, so now you can finally see our clock spring like I was telling you guys. And you're gonna see two connectors here. And what we're gonna do is release this little red locking tab and squeeze. There's one. Same thing with the bottom one. And squeeze, there's two. And now you're gonna see, it looks like three torque screws holding the actual clock spring on. So I'll show you guys that too. So. Here is the little connector on this side that you're going to remove, and that is the locking tab. So you pop that little red piece out, and then you squeeze the remaining part. Same thing with this one. Pop the red piece out, squeeze the remaining. So those two are done, and then one, two, and three, and this thing should pop off. So let's remove those three and get this out. Okay, so the orientation, we did get it right from the beginning. Um, this connector clip thing is at the top, and you can tell that by looking at the steering wheel, and you can see the steering wheel has this large notch out at the top. So we're already centered based on what we did at the beginning of this video. We can go ahead and toss this on, and it's gonna be the reverse of what we just did, guys. So we'll put this on. We'll reinstall those three torque screws that we just took out. How the three Torx screws are tight. We'll go ahead and reinsert our clips. So we'll start with this yellow one and make sure you put the red locking tab back in. Same with the bottom. Fully seat with the red locking tab. Now we can put our lower cover back on. Take a bit of finesse here, but it will fall into place, I promise. Once you get that cover in, you're gonna put your two torque screws in the front here to hold the cover on. And with your lower cover, the three screws, torque screws that hold it in place, installed and tightened, you're gonna put this top cover in, and it has this like hinge type thing. So there's two hinges on the back. Just put them in their respective spots, and then this clips down. You'll hear that solid click that you just heard and it's in. So after that, clock spring centered, you're gonna take the mark on your steering wheel and line it up with the mark here on your steering column, as well as your clock spring, like so. And this will be the end result. If you guys can see here. So, your clock spring is going to be centered, those two um, tabs are going to engage, and this mark is going to line up with the mark on your steering column, if you guys can see those two marks. So those two marks will line up, and now we can put the bolt back in place.
Next step, you're gonna see this large connector and that little connector that was over here for the side of the, um, well actually all switches really. This connector controls all the switches. This one is for um, feeding everything. And we have the respective connectors that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. So we're gonna plug everything back in and then we're just gonna push the airbag straight in. You'll hear it click and that'll be done. Okay, so the airbag is back installed. Everything is tight, so we can go ahead and reconnect our battery. That's pretty straightforward, just the two terminals with this 10 millimeter wrench, <clears throat> and then we can test it out and make sure our horn works. And that's gonna do it, guys, for today's video. The clock spring, new clock spring's installed, and we're all done. So if you guys like this video, I know it's a little bit different from the usual contents, but maybe you guys are new, um, stopping by the first time, we do a lot of mods, different stuff, maintenance, doesn't matter what brand it is. But if you like this video, please give a thumbs up for me. Make sure you're subscribed with that bell notification turned on so you guys are informed of all the latest videos. And thanks so much, as always guys, for your support. It is much appreciated, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.